once again, today's big goal is to talk about our special segments. We're going to talk about one we haven't discussed in great de detail, but we are going to talk about how to make some measurements accurately. Two things you need. You need a piece of paper to use that as your 90 degree angle, and then you need a ruler so you can measure sides. Now it's also helpful to be able to um, use a protractor to, to do the angle bisectors, but I'll teach you some ways on how to deal with that. First off, let's deal with this one we haven't discussed much. It's called altitudes. This is our first one we're going to focus on right here. The key thing, altitudes, what is the name of the point of concurrency? It's called the orthocenter. I'm not worried about question number two right now, but I do want to focus on question number three. What is an altitude, or how do you draw an altitude? To draw an altitude, you go from one side, perpendicular to that side, to hit the opposite vertex. So you want to draw a segment that is perpendicular to one side. and intersects the opposite vertex. When drawing this one, you only need a ruler. So you might want to make that note. Only need a ruler. Sorry, sorry, the corner of a paper. We only need the 90, not the ruler. I misspoke. So I'm going to use this little box that I've created as my piece of paper. And remember, I have my 90s right here in the corners. They're all good corners on my paper. So here's how you do it. I always like to start with this base part that's horizontal already. And so I take my piece of paper, and I align it with that base, and I slide until I intersect an opposite vertex. So you can see how this piece lines up with the base. We have our 90 degree angle here, and the other segment slides up and hits the vertex. Now I can draw my altitude, and I'll make mine dotted just so it'll stand out better here in just a second. And I'll pull this one over to the side so you can see it a little easier. There's my altitude left over. This one right here is a 90 degree angle with this side, and it goes up and hits the opposite vertex. Draw that real quick. So that altitude is generally the easiest one. What we need to do now is rotate our paper to where we get another side of the triangle horizontal. So I'll have to kind of be tricky on mine. Um, since I can't rotate my paper, I'm going to rotate this triangle. So all you're going to do is rotate your paper to get another side to be horizontal. So I would rotate this whole thing, get this side horizontal once again. Here's what I'm going to do. Watch this. It's a little more challenging. I'm going to rotate my piece of paper. And then I'll slide it along that base again until it intersects Now I can see I'm along the base. I go out, hit my vertex, there's my ninety. So I can draw in my dotted line now. So there's my 90. If you can't do that, here's the method that I would suggest.
take your paper and rotate your paper to where you get another side to be horizontal. Right now I have one side horizontal. Now I have another side horizontal. I can do this one horizontal now. I have this base horizontal and I'm going to use my little piece of paper. I'm going to grab my piece of paper. I'm going to rotate it until that base is horizontal just like the base of my triangle and then I'll slide along that base with it lined up until I hit a vertex and it's hidden a little bit. And so mine's now right down through here. And there's my third one. Once again, where these cross is this common point. Its point of concurrency is called the orthocenter. That point right there is called the orthocenter. One neat property of this triangle is that it creates a bunch of right triangles. Now, it doesn't say that any of them are the same size or anything because I did a scaling acute triangle. However, we do have a lot of right triangles that we can use. What I'm going to do next is a little bit of review. We're going to talk about angle bisectors, medians, and so forth. So let's do angle bisectors next. Now, on angle bisectors, it's a little trickier, but what you can do is you can actually fold your paper to see where the angle can be divided. Don't fold your red paper. You can actually fold the white paper. You don't have to do it. I will let you eyeball it on this one, but use your ruler. Make nice straight lines, and you need to make sure that you are bisecting the angle as best you can. So here's how I bisect. Right now they are not even, so I slide it over. So those are some decent angle bisectors. I'm a little off the vertex at a couple spots. Make sure you have your angle marks. We have singles, doubles, and triples. All right, so whenever you have intersecting angle bisectors, they intersect at a special point called the ooh, in center. Some of you need to study this. This is definitely on your test. It's called the in center. Why is it called the end center? It's because if you draw that as a center of a circle, you can draw a circle inside, and then where you touch, those pieces will all be a radius of that circle inside here, and those little segments be, would be the same. So it's not saying that these segments right here are the same. It would be the point to where the circle touches that triangle. Those pieces would be the same length. So how do you draw an angle bisector? Well, you draw a segment. From a vertex, from each vertex. That divides each angle evenly. on angle bisectors. This is all you should have. If you have 90 degree angles on your angle bisectors, you need to erase them right now. If you have any segment marks around the sides of the triangle, you need to erase those. When you're bisecting an angle, you only have marks on the angles. That's it. On your altitudes, what are the only marks you should have? 90 degree angles. If you have anything on altitudes other than the 90 degree angles, you need to erase those. No more, no less. Now we have medians. Who remembers how to draw a median? Anybody? 
Okay? It's a segment. Let's write this down. Draw a segment from vertex to opposite midpoint. Draw a segment from the vertex to the opposite midpoint. So here's what a mid sorry, a median looks like. A median goes from a vertex to the opposite midpoint. So what you need to do is to really be accurate, you need to measure those segments, divide the length by two to find where your actual medians are. I'll go ahead and do that. Take your time. Do it on your own. All right. Now that I've measured and found my midpoints, I need to state or show that they are midpoints. How can I show that those are midpoints? Take marks on their side. So singles doubles, and triples. And if you pay attention to what a median is, it's a segment from vertex to opposite midpoint. You can do that now. So I start at a vertex, and I want to go to the opposite midpoint. Vertex, the opposite midpoint would be over here. Vertex, the opposite midpoint. Vertex, opposite midpoint. Those are my medians. Do I need to draw any more symbols on them? Any right angles or angle marks anywhere? Okay. We don't need any more marks on these. The key trend, the key thing, the key concept on this one was that this is where we divided segments into thirds. Remember how we took one of them and we kind of drew it out to the side, and we started saying, all right, from here to here is one-third. There's the longer piece. We've got to cut it ourselves. That is the topic with medians. Just draw this as a little reminder out to the side. That's the one you draw out to the side. You've got to do the one-third little trick, divide the two-thirds piece on your own, and go from there. What's the name of the point of concurrency for median? I would. I do. All right, here we go. So the name of the point of concurrency on this one is called a centroid. Centroid on this one. Cool thing is, I like this one the best because you can take your pencil and put it on the centroid right here. If you actually have the triangle cut out, it will balance on that point. It's also a balancing point if you want to make that little note. It's kind of cool, and we'll do that later on. That one's the balancing point. It's kind of cool. Our last ones are perpendicular bisectors, and these are the trickiest ones. These are the trickiest ones. So a perpendicular bisector, I'm more so going to talk about the steps because it takes so many steps. So in case you've forgotten, or actually I'll ask you, does anybody remember step one for perpendicular bisectors? Midpoints. So find all your midpoints. Do that real quick. To show that these are truly midpoints, what should I do? Take marks on the sides, so singles, doubles, and triples if it's scaling. It would be different if it's isosceles or equilateral. What do I need to do from there? Okay, so I need to come, I need to start on that midpoint and to come off of this side at a 90 degree angle, meaning I need to come up like this off a 90 degree angle. So, so draw perpendicular segment from each midpoint.
draw a perpendicular segment from each midpoint. So once again, I'm going to get a little tool. I'm going to have a little piece of paper. Here's my piece of paper. And you find the side that's already horizontal. You take your piece of paper, align it with that side, and then you start dragging until you hit your midpoint. I don't want to hit the vertex. I want to stop on the midpoint this time. It did hit my vertex. That's just pure luck. What I can do now is I can draw that segment and draw my 90 degree angle. I'm not supposed to go to my vertex, so I'm not going to draw all the way to my vertex. I strongly recommend do not go to that opposite vertex. Next, you can grab your piece of paper and you can rotate it until you have another side that's horizontal, so kind of like that. And I will real quick grab my piece of paper, align it with the side, and start sliding until I hit my midpoint. So mine's a little tricky because my paper kind of disappears, but I lined it up a second ago, so it's pretty good. Yours should definitely be better than this because your paper works. Then I have one more side to do. So on this last one, I gotta take another little picture. Gotta rotate it one more time. That last side horizontal. Grab my right angle tool. Oh, I need to rotate my triangle just a little bit. Maybe a hair more. And now, a line along that side. And they should all intersect. So these are the marks you need on yours. Make sure you have exactly what's pictured right here. You need your segment marks on your sides, and you also need those 90 degree angle symbols. So 90s, your segments on your sides, and make sure that these don't go and hit the opposite vertex. It will only happen if you have isosceles or equilateral. The last thing we need to say is what is the name of the point of concurrency for these perpendicular bisectors, and these are the circumcenter. That means if you draw a circle with the center on it, the circle will go around and hit these vertices, making these distances the same. So obviously, mine's in the wrong spot. But these distances would be the same. Don't draw those, just a little idea.